Eric, you got the football you got from them? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it was in my locker on Monday uh, Monday when I came in for workouts. I was like, oh, man. And then I remember on the side, they say 168. Don't know what that means, but it say 168, and it got a little Pittsburgh uh, logo on it. Eric, you, uh, did you line up across from Jamar Chase in, uh, in college at all? And, and if so, who got the better opinion? Um, I lined up against them in the SEC Championship when they went and won the whole thing that year. But uh, it was a good matchup. Um, I really can't say because that was 2019, I want to say. I really don't remember or whatever. But um, I just know he's a great uh, he's a great wide receiver, of course, top five pick. And uh, back with um, Joe Burrow to, with a great connection. So it's going to be a good challenge. Is that Pittsburgh team kind of what you've expected that you'd be thrown at a lot just because of who you are and then you'd answer the bell eventually? Is that kind of what the expectation was. Wait, sorry, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, that, that Pittsburgh game, obviously been through at you a lot. Um, was that kind of your expectation this year that people would throw throw the ball at you a lot and eventually you'd go up? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because I knew for a fact, like, I got the best DB on the other side. I got the best corner on the other side. So I knew for a fact they did not go throw it to him. So I just got to make, make the best of my opportunity because I knew for a fact, like, the ball was going to be coming to me because they're not going to throw it to 23. So just continue to get my mind ready, my body ready, and all that stuff. So I, I you know that most of the balls going to come to you because first of all, you are a rookie. They gonna try to rook, and plus you got one of the best corners on the other side of you, so they ain't throwing it in him. Eric, it sounds like um, you know you and you have gotten close to Jair, or you at least really respect him. How hard is it to see him go through what he's going through right now? And is there anything you can do to help him? Oh, uh, no, nah, like pretty much like, yeah, me and Jai real close, but the only thing I could do is just be his, like pretty much be his person like he always be me, like just cheer him up, do all the little things, just, just keep him smiling, keep him going around. Like that's all I, that, that's all I can do. And just like, he just keep do, telling me things, doing and just leading me on and off the field. How do you maintain composure knowing that you'll probably have a, a little bit of a bigger role this week with John on the sidelines? Oh, nothing much. Just keep, just go ahead and continue doing what I'm doing best. Just focusing on me, focusing on my assignment, and hauling in on any little thing that, that I can do. Just keep going to uh, Coach OG, like what I call him, Coach OG. Just keep uh, asking him questions, keep asking him multiple different things so I can just get clarification. I know your, your ball skills was a big thing that you worked on in college. How, how much work have you put into that, and how gratifying was it? To, I mean, four games in, you're, you're picking off a Hall of Famer. Oh uh, yeah, work, I work on that ball skills every day, literally every day throughout the uh, periods and all this stuff, just to continue getting my hands, my eyes, all that stuff. It just basically just me focusing in on the ball, like just keeping concentration on the ball. It's not looking everywhere else, not doing all the other stuff, and everything else will come. But just continue doing that, continue get, get reps at it, and just continue gaining that confidence. Eric, what's your? You had some, you had some flags thrown against you. A couple of them, you know, probably questionable at best. How do you how do you deal with that? Like during the game, I mean, there's got to be some frustration there when, when you don't feel like that flag was justified. <laughs> uh, you know, know me. I'm always go smile, laugh it off, and just move on to the next play. Like, hey man, I can't dwell on it. I can't think. I can't think too much about it. Just smile, laugh, and just keep it moving. Just make sure that I don't do whatever I just did. <laughs> Oh, uh, he's a guy that's gonna come in and work. Like I can see that from day one. Well, like I'm already seeing him getting extra work. He already doing like the little drills that we do. Uh, after practice, he already coming over there doing extra work, just getting in with us and all that stuff, and just trying to find his place. Cause I already know he already know a couple of players on the team already. So like they already got that connection, already got that bond. So he's already fitting in great with us. Hey, Eric, when you, when you look at the first four weeks, what'd you play? Eight snaps in the opener. Something uh, like that? Yeah, something, yeah, okay. something And then like that. they decided to move Kevin inside in the nickel, so now you're out there for 40-some snaps. Then Kevin has the concussion, so you not, and now Jair, who knows what's going to happen. Has, have things moved kind of in a crazy way for you? As you're the first round pick, we all have high expectations for you, but it's been kind of a wild first month for you, hasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, it's been a crazy month. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, been some ups and some downs. But, you know, it's just the NFL life. Like, you never know day in and day out, like, who's going to be up, who's going to be down, and all that stuff. So you just got to go ahead and flip that switch. You always got to be prepared. Like, that's one thing that's 
I, it always care from me from UGA and to here to where like especially with Coach Smart, you always say like you just got to treat yourself like you're a starter. So like even if I'm taking the backup reps, I got to treat myself like I'm a starter because I never know like when that moment will come and I don't want to miss my opportunity. So you're so happy go lucky, right? You said you laugh it off if it's a bad call, but what does the even though you don't know what the number on your ball means, what does the interception mean? Is it is it you're a confident guy, but does it kind of give you a little more confidence? And, and as you're kind of going through this journey, you're you're even in a better spot this week than you were a week ago, or, or how do you view it? Oh, I just try to keep my confidence high because I'm not trying to get down on myself. I'm not trying to overthink anything. Just don't, like, just pretty much, that's why I say just don't think because the moment I start thinking is the moment I start messing up. So just don't think. Just go out there and just have fun. Like, just treat this like high school. Just go out there, have fun, do you, and everything. Yo, just go come along. Like, if you make a mistake, so what? It is what it is. Just go ahead and live with it and just go ahead and move on to the next play. Just go ahead and treat everything like high school because high school is some of the best times of my life and just continue to move on and let's just play. Going back to the interception, what did you see on that play? Um, I saw from the start when I reroute and I looked, I saw a ball. I was like, oh, OK, here comes the ball. Like, All right now. And then that's when I put my hands up. And then at last minute, he started pulling me away. So that's why like they was laughing because like they would say, I don't see how you caught that. I was like, yeah, man, you just got to trust these natural hands. That's why I say, I like to say my hands are like blue checks because they're certified. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's what I always say. But uh, just keep moving to where, like I said, to be honest, I don't even know how I caught that either because my hands, like, he pulled me away so I couldn't see. But luckily I caught it because these hands certified. Are your hands much better with all the work that you put in. Are your hands much better than they were a couple years ago? Yes, hands down, hands down, because it's just the point of like me actually putting in work. Because coming out of uh, high school, I was a running back, transferred to DB when I got to UGA. So like just working on my hands. So like those ones, one of the first things that, that I had to work on, it was just trying to learn how to play DB. It was trying to learn how to do press, how to play off, how to read this, how to read that. So like towards my last year, that's when I finally started. All right, now I need the ball. So now over the past last two years, I've been working on hands, so just pretty much continue to gain that confidence with my hands and continue to gain that trust. What are some of the things you've done that you think have really improved that for you more than anything? Are there certain drills that have, you feel like have really had a bigger impact on that? Or? Oh, especially with Jai. Like we, like, we do tennis balls, so he'll just start throwing tennis balls. Like, he, like we'll just be, like, uh, if it's before practice or, like, before the game, or even when we's like doing meetings, he'd just throw a tennis ball and just get in like concentration on that little on that little small tennis ball that it help you out because you really don't know how hard it is to catch a tennis ball until he actually start throwing it. And I'm like, man, when well, this tennis ball hard, so like just continue working on a little tennis ball with hands down one of my best things that he done taught me. So like you'll be in a meeting and he'll just throw the ball randomly at you? Or yeah, like like pretty much if we got a break, like all uh, OG be like, you got two minutes. And that's when like we'll just start throwing the ball and after that he and after that if you drop it, like he'll be like, Oh man, the rook ain't ready, the rook ain't ready. So it's just something like I just gotta stay on my toes when I'm around him. After four games, are you doing film study a little bit different, like paying more attention to formations or I mean, are you are you going after film a little different from lessons you learn in game? Yeah, like it's it's some different things that I'm trying to pick up on, but then again every team is different, so it's kind of hard to like keep that same routine, same thing. It just I just go off the same like okay, this day I'm finna do this, this day I'm finna do that. Like I keep that the same, but overall it's pretty much hard to say because like every team is different. So you just gotta look at different different key points and different things for the and for and for that team. What do you think of Joe Burrow? <laughs> He's a real good quarterback now. I, I played, of course, I played him in 2019 SC Championship. Yeah, um, he was like so, like all so pretty much all of the things that he's doing now, it don't shock me. I seen it back then, so I like I know for a fact he can scramble. Like that's one thing that people didn't know coming out of college that he can really run, and you get an opportunity like he can actually move, and um, of course like that's a great tough quarterback, and one that you would love to have. So like just going against him is just another great opportunity. No disrespect to any of the other quarterbacks, but. From what you've seen on film, is Joe the best quarterback you guys have faced this season, in your opinion? Um, it's hard to say because uh, we have faced some really good quarterbacks. So, I mean, we have faced some really good, really good quarterbacks up to here. So, like, this only going to get tougher. Anything else from in the room?
All right, Sarah, we'll take the one from uh, Zoom, please. Um, Aaron Rodgers has been talking about some of the speeches he's been giving this season and some of the players have talked about what this meant to them. For a guy like yourself who grew up watching him, um, what's it like to be in a room and giving him pre or post game? Yeah, it's crazy. Because you just grow up watching 12, you grow up watching Tom Brady, you grow up watching these guys, and then now you're sitting right here, and I'm actually hearing Aaron Rodgers talk, Aaron Rodgers, like the way how he prepared and everything. Like I still tell my people back, like my roommates from college, like I still can't believe that I'm actually here with with Aaron Rodgers. Like it's like it's some things that he tell me, like like there's some things he'll do, like before a game. Like he always come up to me, he always say something and all that stuff. And then I always tell my group chat, like my roommates and all that stuff, like, yo, 12 just told me this, and da 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 And they be like, man, well, that's crazy. And all that stuff, because like, we all can't believe, like, I'm actually talking to a Hall of Famer, I'm talking to the GOAT. Like, it's actually crazy to me. So just day in and day out, I'm always just like crazy for, like, just hearing any little thing that he can say. Can you pretend that we're the group chat and give us something that maybe that he said to you? Uh, okay, so family night, uh, on the family night game was when uh, he came up to me and he was like, um, who's, who, and who's more nervous right now, me or I forgot who else it was. And I just did it. I just started laughing and all that stuff. And I said, of course, that person and all that stuff. But uh, and then I, thought I told my group chat that and my group chat just started laughing and all that stuff because like, they thought Aaron Rodgers was so serious, so straight to business. And I was like, nah, man, this is one of the goofiest person that you ever meet. <laughs>